Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of the New Buys Twisted Boat series, episode 21 we're on to now and a range of content in this episode for you today, starting with an Esport and then an Abyssal Whip Drop, you're, you're used to seeing those. And we've got our first Master Clue of the episode, on to 120 now, a couple of Magic Seeds there. And our first Hard Clue of the episode and 35k. And a bit better there, 108k, some Purple Sweets. Another Jad down, nice to see him with that Santa hat on, KC8 now in the fight caves, and no pet on uh, beating him there. And no pet there either. Bit of the Dagoneth Kings, and nice to see a Berserker ring in this trip. I make that two Berserker rings, yes it's almost usually two Warrior rings, but it's the other way around this time. And a very healthy DK's trip there with a solid 5 mil almost from the rings and then with the bones as well, 6.1 mil in total. A couple of hard clues to quickly open and 108k. And Lumbiar teleports there, 209k. Spory KC, 160. And another hard clue up to 928 now, going for 1000 probably on this account. Another that Fire Cape forgot to record the uh, Jad um, dying, but uh, we didn't get the pet anyway. Now a bit of a Skatizo, always good pet chance this, 1 in 65 from the boss. We are approaching 65 kill count here, so I do expect it soon, although of course it is the same chance every kill. So if you do 64 kills, you're technically no closer to the drop when you started, but uh, it's not the way I like to view RNG. I'd prefer to view, view it as a probability in this case, and if that's true we are, well I think it's like 63% to the drop once we hit 65 KC, but um, that's probably a bit too complicated for me to um, try and explain. Couple of brimstone keys, got some magic logs, not bad, and some coal. And an agility level coming in here, decided to uh, finally do a bit of it, and uh, yeah, nice milestone there, level 80. Now, some demonic gorilla shenanigans for you uh, over the next um, 30 seconds or so. Uh, I managed to pull four different uniques in one trip, and I'll let you guess now if any of them were Zenites at all. Based on my history, you probably thought uh, there would be some Zenites, but no, it's sort of blister piece, and then a monkey tail. That's a very rare one to see. One in 1500. It's held its value surprisingly well, actually, still uh, almost 500k. And there was a Ballista Spring, that's our second different Ballista piece in uh, one trip. And if you got three, why not make that four uniques, but uh, yeah, like frame. No Zenite Shard. If you're wondering why the price of the Zenite has crashed a fair bit, well, this clip might just show you. Look at that, you've got about four different, or five different accounts stacked on top of each other trying to um, fight the same gorilla, so... Yeah, I had a bit of a laugh at this actually, I tried to play around with them a little bit and it did work at one point, we got them all stacked on, on top of each other and look, the, <laughs> the ball hits all of them at once, but yeah, yeah it's pretty sad to see uh, the price of the shard and uh, look at them all running to the same gorilla. It's, um, the sad thing is, a lot of those accounts, I looked them up and they look like hacked accounts, like they've all got sort of raids KC and like the gear they use here you know, is, is dreadful, um, but yeah, depressing beer. That task finished anyway, we got ourselves four uniques, but no Zeno. Back to Krill Suits are off, my good old friend the Monk's got Zami Spear on our first trip here and then yeah, the Steam Battle Staff curse uh, returned, that one there, uh, that joy didn't last too long. And that trip in total, a nice split of 370k each. Whilst doing some Sarah, I did meet someone else there who's uh, got a similar goal to me going for the pet, he has a Twister Boat as well, so we decided to do uh, the world hopping method, um, got a little Sarah Sword for you there, just going to show it now. Yeah, I mean I had so many Sarah Swords, none of them really mean much, but uh, we pretty much yeah, just hop worlds, kill the boss, quickly dispose of the minions as well, because we have two T-Bows, the boss goes down pretty quickly, so yeah, kill Zilly and just quickly dispose of Bree, Growl and Starlight. And then, yeah, ready to go. Uh, hop 10 seconds later in the corner of the room and just hope the servers don't crash. Well, here we go. Um, this was a long time coming. I didn't manage to get it live record because I didn't record any, more, or any of my live Kraken trips and this was a big shock to me. I thought, you know, I thought I was going to go into the 10,000 KC for this, but uh, we did get it in the end, 8849, and that's uh, pet number six on the account now. And the Kraken Tentacle just as we finish our last ever task here. And I will show you my collection log at Kraken. It's not too bad actually, minus the fact we didn't get the pet until uh, 8,800 kill count or so. 16 Tentacles, 18 Tridents, 
nine jars, pretty much on drop rate to be honest, and then obviously the pet at last. Yes, that one felt good to do. I know it's not much of a pet, but um, yeah, I've been grinding for that one for a while, and after seeing so many people get it really early, I thought, you know, it just didn't exist, and then getting on leagues as well, that was pretty bad, um, but we did get it in-game eventually, and uh, there's our reward. And just got to ensure another couple here. I've um, got the KVD pet and the beaver a while back too. Forgot to ensure them. And then you can see all of our pets. It was time to do a master clue after that successful Kraken trip in 350k. Another long DK strip and another berserker. And yes, three in this episode. That's about four in a row, I think. Or four since my last warrior ring, anyway. And yeah, 179 kills that solo trip was. And that is my PB so far. And we're rewarded with that very nice 4.2 mil profit. And another master clue for you, that's 122 now, 246k. A spory kill count 163, the dream of two pets in one episode not going to happen unfortunately. And yes, the giant mole, I got this as a slayer task, I have done a little bit of this, um, just kind of as a different activity, and then I yeah, finally got it assigned as a slayer task, and it was good fun. Um, a max range setup plus the slayer helm. It makes them all very, very well. It was pretty easy before, but it's even easier now. Yes, killed it in five hits there. Of course, it didn't burrow in the work clips where it did burrow. But um, yeah, definitely recommend you do this thing to get it as a task. It's very, very quick as well. I'll just show you the profits from those 35 kills in a second. As you can see, 100 U-Logs, got the 35 claws, 77 skins. They go for quite a bit. And yes, almost one mil. Back to Skatizo. And yeah, Battle Stars. Kill count 60 at Skatizo now. And the next master clue. And I got ourselves an anguish ornament kit. Yes, the luck continues. 10.1 mil in total. That thing's worth almost 10 mil, I think. So that's the second one I've got in the account. And of all the ornament kits, we've got a couple of tormented ones too. So we're certainly getting some uh, good RNG on that side. And another unique Alova Kenge hood. A bit of Cerberus to finish this episode. I wasn't too motivated to go back after, well, getting a, another smoldering stone in a Bagasian, but we've still got drops to get in the series, and that was an Eternal Crystal. Yes, that is three out of the four uniques now uh, from Cerb. Just missing, of course, the best drop, the Primordials, which are worth uh, a good 30 million GP. Still amazing how they've retained their value uh, so well, even though they don't really give that much damage bonus over Dragon Boots. And that was another Eternal Crystal, two in one task, so I was very pleased with that. Just pleased to get drops here after going uh, dry for so long. Managed to do the task in one day, 194 kills for 8.4 mil in total. So you pretty much, if you don't get drops here, you probably have to say break even, maybe even lose money. But thanks to the couple of Eternals we got, we uh, made some profit and we're much more motivated to do some Cerberus in the future and grind out the Prim's Jar and maybe even the Pet as well. 164 Aspori KC. And just a Jad. Uh, to finish off this episode with a couple of clues to come. A uh, very enjoyable kill, this one, just watching the Twisted Boat absolutely destroy him. I never sort of realised how long you really get between those hits that Jad has. I think it's like seven or eight ticks or something, but it's it seems kind of so easy now, although I mean, you can easily say that do it using a T-Bot or a blow pipe, but um, yeah. <laughs> uh, no pet on that kill, but always we'll gamble the capes instantly, because uh, once we're out of here, uh, we're not going to do any more fire capes. But yeah, it's going to continue. Got ourselves a Master Casket to open at the Mining Guild, and it turned out to be a Mimic. Third Age Road Top and Third Age Ring previously at the Mimic. And we've got a Master Scroll Book from that one, and some Death Runes. That brings us to the end of another new Bias Twisted Boat episode. And just a couple of drops to share with you in at this one that uh, add to our collection log and goals for the series. Got ourselves the Kraken Pet, yes, 8,849 kill count uh, that took. And then I finished the task, and I will never be going back there ever again. Uh, let's just say the log didn't look too bad in the end. They've got quite a lot of tridents and tentacles and, well, nine jars as well. But um, I guess it's a one in a thousand drop rate, so it's probably about right in the end. They've got ourselves an Eternal Crystal from Cerberus as well. Uh, there's going to be quite a bit of that to come in future episodes. I'm determining to get those pro primordial boots or primordial crystal at least anyway. It'll be a nice 30 mil boost to the bank. And I might even stay there 
and just do that anyway until we get the pet and or the jar. And um, I feel like it's a boss that uh, I might actually enjoy finishing, though it does eat eat, eat, eat up a lot of supplies. Um, it's quite a fun boss to do, and it's quite kind of just cool, like mechanically. It's you know it's got a few mechanics you do have to pay a bit of attention, but on the whole, I do find it very relaxing to use uh, the twisted bow at. So yeah, that does finish another episode. Plenty more clues in this episode too. There'll be loads of those uh, in the future, and uh, the next episode will be out this time next week. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I will see you then.